Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for your grace and your power. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we are gathered before you at this crucial time. When families' homes are upside down, let the spirit of revival come upon every marriage in the name of Jesus. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a single blessing. On thought Sundays like this, we dedicated to the home. So today, we're going to look at a topic which I want you to listen to very carefully. It is called marriage criminals marriage criminals it's good for you to listen carefully there are three deep examples in the bible of men who were chronic marriage criminals the people who sometimes claim they are reading the Bible. They are not reading it well. When you pick those just three of those people out and you see the verdict of heaven the chronic acidic verdict of heaven it should make you tremble but people just read it and read it and forget it the first person is in Genesis chapter 12 Genesis chapter 12 Genesis I read from verse 10 the first person of the three, just three examples we want to take. Genesis 12:10. Genesis And I was a famine in the land. In your Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there. Abraham Egypt For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near unto Egypt. He said unto Sarah his wife. Behold now. I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So Sarah was a very, very beautiful woman. Therefore, it shall come to pass. When the Egyptians see thee, that he shall say, This is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee. That thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. And my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abraham was come unto Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princess also Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. So Abraham automatically lost his wife. His fear that they may kill him. His fear that the wife may be stolen. Had not come to pass. Verse 16 and he entreated Abraham well for her sake he had sheep and oxen and he has his and men servants and men servants and she has his and camels because Abraham told the woman to say you are my sister don't say wife and these people did not even know that 
to what they were telling them was not totally true. Then what was the verdict of heaven? And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah Abraham's wife. Abraham and Pharaoh called Abraham and said, Pharaoh, see, Abraham, oh, what is it that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why says thou she's my sister? So I might have taken her to me to, to me to wife now. Therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away. And his wife and all that he had. That is example number one. He took another man's wife. Heaven plagued him. Heaven. Not that Abraham prayed against her, it was automatic. Heaven had to plague those who do such a things. So heaven plagued him. Please listen very carefully. The second example you find in Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. I read from verse 1. Genesis 21. And Abraham journeyed from thence towards his hard country. Abraham and dwelt between Kadesh and Shore and sojourn in Gera. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife. Abraham said, is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. Abimelech, Sarah. For the second time again, Sarah had been captured because of her beauty. And because Abraham did not want them to kill him, he said, She's my sister. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she's a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, No, without also slay a righteous nation, said it not to me that she's my sister. And she, even she herself said, It's my brother. So, in the integrity of my heart and innocence, of my hands have I done this. And God said to him in a dream, yeah, I know that thou didst do this in the integrity of the heart. For I also will tell thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffered I did not to touch her. That is, if he had slept with the woman, his problem would be worse. So, so because, because I see that you are innocent, that's why I prevented you from sleeping with her. So, but already you are a dead man. You are just walking about. You are dead. dead. You can see again the verdict of heaven. A terrible verdict. Terrible, terrible verdict. So now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he's a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shall live. If thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. And Abimelech did that very quickly. Verse 17. Says, so Abraham prayed unto God. Abraham said, And God healed Abimelech and his wife. And, and his maid servants. And they bear children. For the Lord at first closed up 
all the wombs of the house of Abimelech. Nitori Oluwa ti se inu awon ara ile Abimelech because of Sarah's Abraham's wife. Nitori Sarah ti si Abraham ay Abraham the womb of men servant, men servant, wife, serve anybody that work with the king. Ni o close. Ni Oluwa ba se inu gbogbo awon odobirin obirin ton ba Abraham si Abimelech si se. That's the second story. Iye ni ton keji. That's the third one. Iketa tun wa second Samuel. Samuel keji. Second Samuel, Samuel Ekeji, chapter twelve. Ori Ekeji la. I read from verse seven. Oka la ti es Ekeji. This is David. David ni. Second Samuel twelve seven. It was Samuel Ekeji. Ori Ekeji la es Ekeji. And Nathan said to David. Nathan is saying, "We found David the bay." Thou art the man. A war lay up on him. Thus said the Lord God of Israel. By the Lord who alone Israel is. I let the king of Israel. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house. And I gave thee thy master's house. And I gave thee thy master's house. And thy master's wives unto thy bosom. Ati and wo bini olu wa resi. And I gave thee the house of Israel of Judah. And I gave thee the house of Israel of Judah. To Judah, for and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Oh, wherefore, as thou despise the commandment of the Lord, to do evil in his sight, to to do evil in his sight, 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 a warm more beauty, let it be she or beauty. And I slain with the sword of the children of Ammon. Oh, see, see, fee either a warm or a ammon. Say now, therefore, Nitorina, the sword shall never either depart from thine house. Kuro, ni lere, titi lie the same kind of verdict for those ones in Genesis. Erufa, it that your corner part you renew in Genesis because thou hast despised me. Nitorifa, it was a keg on me. And as taking the wife of Uriah, the Ita to be the wife. He was taken by Aya Uriah. That is Jehovah. Who says the Lord? By in your love. Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. She is a mere jerky. Be cured to the sea. I will take the wife before thy eyes and give them unto thy neighbour. A mere jerky. I will bring the Lord to her. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. Oh, mere jerky. I will bring the rest soon. For thou didst it secretly. At the point he was saying, "Come, you need to go." But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Three examples. The first one. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Abraham told Sarah to say, "Why you are my sister?" Abraham so put Sarah to go with Arab women. He was afraid that the ungodly Egyptians would kill him because of his pretty wife. Ne to de pe oro pe awon ala ara Egypt o mo lorin won pa awon nitori iyawo re to re wa. And truly, Sarah was his sister. Ne to to ara bin Abraham ni Sarah she. They were allowed to do that that time. Ni ba won je kon se ori re le ni ba na. You can allow marry your sister. O le fe nti o je ara bin re. It was true. But Abraham should have not told the half truth. He should have told them more that oh, oh, she's my sister. But now she's my wife. Abraham, but the man so to a pack on. He packed his so to talk to one Hebrew. Arab bring me tell tell us. Money is in here. He has what money. So based on that half truth, Pharaoh took her. To the story about the toy, the Pharaoh was shocked. But by taking her, he had broken a spiritual law. So when he packed it by, he ought to fall about the rule of fifty. And whether he was innocent or not, he would have to face. The repercussions. Oh, you want the alliance? I be want the alliance. Oh, that to do call rabbi. And the repercussions were not only spiritual in nature, but also physical as well. I want rabbi rabbi. When you kill, watch it. The party, the mini con, the party, that one work below. Say the Lord plagued the house of Pharaoh because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Oh, you are your. It did not fall out. No, not to re. Yeah, oh, Abraham. The plagues only ceased. I want your no one. You want duro when the object of controversy and transgression. Was removed and returned to the rightful owner. Nigba ti on to fa a rinyo dinyo a ti wahala e a mukuru wase fili e ti otosi lowo. There are plenty of marriage criminals. Kupo ni a wong odaran e gbe ya wo among the top ten of marriage criminals. Le aba wo a wong me wa la a wong me wa to po ju. Top ten. A wong me wa to po ju. Which I want to have time to go into all the ten this morning. Mo le ma me nu kong buku me wa wa e lo uro e. Among the Larry, I want me what to put a gate to Larry. The first group I want is sorry, Kenny, are those with stolen wives 
or stolen husbands. Stolen wives. Stolen husbands. In case you are here. You are listening to me. There's a woman in your house. You are in a man's house. No dowry. No engagement. No marriage. Mr. Man, you are a thief. You have stolen a whole human being. No dowry. No engagement. No marriage. And you are living there. No certificate. The man is a thief. The woman is a stolen wife. Stolen wife. You are here. You are sleeping with or befriending a man or woman who is not your ordained wife. Not your wife. You are a thief. You are using prophetic manipulation or money or position to win a woman's heart to win a man's heart that you are not married to you are a spiritual armed robber only that your weapon is money and gift you did cut marriage, I agree. You did cut marriage. But no pastoral blessing. You claim that you are Christian. You are a chief. Your wife is still stolen. When you are married, or you are not married, and you are committing fornication and adultery of the heart against the opposite sex. You fall under that category too. You are married. Or you are now engaging in marital unfaithfulness. You are having an extramarital affair. All forms of adultery fall under the category of stolen wives and stolen husbands. Writing love letters to persons who they are not your spouse, and you are writing love letters. You are sending romantic text messages to those who are, they are not your, it's not your wife, not your husband. I want to Let me officially announce to you this morning that everyone takes you as a thief. All forms of polygamy is massive stealing. You stole, you, you stole, maybe you didn't even pay dowry for anybody. Or you pick wife number one. After that wife number one, all other wives are stolen wives. Stolen. And this is why a lot of marriages a lot of children are having issues because the foundation under which they were born is wrong and once there is no proper marriage and you have children in that marriage maybe you don't know as far as the bible is concerned those children are bastards that's the, that's the standard. It's not my stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's my opinion. That's the stand of scripture. And, and bastards are not allowed into the generation of faith for the ten generations. Why? Not allowed into the house of faith. Ten generations. So don't be surprised if the children you gave birth to under that your bastardized marriage are behaving like bastards now, and they don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to listen to Jesus, they don't want to read the Bible. Because 
won fe sin olorun won fe wa sile olorun won fe se on toto won fe se on toto na e ma ko ya yin lenu it is because of the foundation you give to them nitori ipile te gbe won sini every act gbogbo igbese of this virginin a woman lati ja abale obirin ko who is not your wife or who you did not marry ti ki se yawo re tabi to fe ni sulaka it's a serious spiritual transaction and covenant and the implication is terrible e do not do ra ma je mu ti emi to le gidigan ni rabo rabo re gan o si le koko this is why some men can never make it till they die e di re re fi won kun emi o le ri party se ti won o let say we key into divine mercy a fi ti won ba wo nu anu ati oke orun wa so this virgin a person is who do you not intend to marry is not your wife is making you a thief tori na ji ja abale obirin ti ki se iyawo re tabi to lati fe out all the ole ni a thief buying unexplainable presents or gift to seduce a man or woman makes you a thief lati ma re mu ta o le si alaye idi re fun okunrin tabi obirin lati pe akiye si re sodo re o so di o le ni pati when you are depriving a woman or a man of the full love of their of their rightful partner then by your unholy interference you're a thief nigba to ba je ki okunrin tabi obirin kan ko ni ife to 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 na fun oko re tabi aya re o ti so di o le ni gba na you are raping a woman you are a thief o fi pa gbo obirin lopo o le ni o this is a serious matter pataki loro eleyi a very serious matter pataki oro to le koko se impregnated a woman o fun obirin kan loyun and you are denying that no be lo se pe rara it's not you e wo ko lo fun loyun you are a thief o le ni o the greatest thieves awon ole to poju to to biju o mari unbelievers oni awon to fe awon ala igbagbo because you have broken a record nitori pe o ti fo akosile kan you stole a wife from the devil o ji iyawo latodo isu you marry a widow o fe o po two months after her husband died o su meji leyin ti oko re ku lo fe you are a powerful thief o le to lagbara ni o Two months, Osu Meji. Three months, Osu Keta. After the proper husband died, Lenny and Tio called her. Kineku married a widow. The wall of fair. That means Oko you. you had started before the man died. It took more than a year to him. Para any jar the wall, jar the koto the kuo kuni yuku. All this unholy capture of fiancé before marriage is stealing. Bobo fifty or one more more. La first one was charged with being a woman. Oh no! I be your no. That my child. No party. All those you in foreign countries who are doing marriage for documents, you are thieves. Eh, you tell one year I'm going to look at it. Then she be your own to look at the real way. Be you only lie. You know. All those preparing love charms to catch people. They are they are thieves. They are stealing men. They are stealing women. But when we turn show, we fair. Come by the phone. We see a hammer. Only ni won lokun ni lo bi ni all women are thieves bo bo bi ni ajeji o le ni awon na all the case of first marriage there is stealing bo bo oro nipa fifi pa money of fair yawo tabi fe oko o le ni won all the pushing small small children to marriage is stealing bo bo titi awon mo kekeke gbon gbon kan lo sinu igbe yawo ise ti o le ni you had a woman sweating away for you working hard sponsoring your education I'm looking after you, and then when you are not comfortable, you got a degree, you got everything. Now you went to marry somebody else. You're a thief. Oh, the opinion can get big, yeah. Oh, 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 tiraka. Ni nuero ni nuojo ni tori re. Okay, come boy, you see me go re. Me is wrong. Wa aye wa wrong. Ni si wa sepo mo beri no mo. You ran off from your husband. O sa kro ni li okore. To another man. Loso do okore miro. On the excuse of poverty. Be ko lo lo wo. A thief, a liar. So, the, out of the top ten of the marriage criminals, for you know, Larry and one or down a boy, I will make one top peregrine to law. Stolen wives, stolen husband, the top the list. I want to do your call, to do your work. I want to know what look at ten ten. You know, I want me why? Bow down your heads now. A theory, but it's in. Begin to talk to the Lord. Father, Baba, in any way we have dissatisfied heaven. Lord, no, you want to move to tell our Lord. Repair me and correct me now. To me, say, cause the family are too shady. In the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord yourself now. Father, I am Baba, Lord, I sorrow by you.
Amen. Amen. Now rise to your feet. Can you with a loud voice cry to the heavens now? My father, my father revive me by fire. So in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cry for that revival. God oh, bless you really good. He brought you here to bless your life. And oh, God bless you really. Turn to somebody and shout it. Really good. Really good. your right hand to the heavenlies and cry this louder than anyone before the early angels depart it is important that your voice is loud and that you are very aggressive the bible says the violent ticketed by force my father i am more than this Bring me out with glory in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree. In Jesus' name we pray. Fighting my star. Your time is up. Down. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening at the back over there. Somebody is crying to the Lord. Jesus name we pray say good doors can your voice roar like thunder that has never opened before for anybody in my family can you shout it loud I'm sure you can do better than that Open for me by fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take kind books. God. God bless you, Jesus. Let's try to our fit, please. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Sing this song loud and clear. Sing like David sang and dance like he danced. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
adoration. Adoration to the Lord he reigns. Adoration to the Lord he reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Adoration to the Lord he reigns. Adoration. Adoration to the Lord he reigns. Adoration to the Lord he reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. He reigns. Adoration to the Lord.
Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, mobilize heaven to help your people today. Lay your hands upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. As we continue our series, the way into spiritual power. The way into spiritual power. Once again, I want to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power. What did he give to them? Against unclean spirits. To cast them out. And to heal all manner of sicknesses. And all manner of diseases. We need power supernatural power to contest with what is contesting with us now and in Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8 Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Are you there? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses. Unto me both in Judea. In Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost path of the earth. Christianity 
is a supernatural religion what makes Christianity different from other religions is the supernatural what does supernatural mean it means forces beyond scientific understanding forces beyond scientific understanding one day i opened my phone I found 202 missed calls from one person. So I called back. Only for this lady to pick up the phone and I could hardly hear her talk. So she said she was in the hospital at the point of death that all our vitals have collapsed so they have pushed out to one corner and they have asked me to go and bring the husband and I said okay did you bring your anointing to that hospital he said daddy I did he said bring it out I prayed anoint yourself and she did it I said I'm feeling better I'm feeling better. The doctors were expecting bad news. They came to her again in uh, where she was lying down. That time they were doing ward round. The professor, professor was there. All the doctors were there. So the professor read her case file. So, so if what you wrote here is right this woman is not supposed to be alive so one of them one of them must have made a mistake so he ordered for those tests to be done again there was a woman they did a test for 9 a.m. in the morning they said all the vitals had collapsed this was 4 p.m. they did the test again the vitals were like those of a little child everything was back Ah. and the professor began to harass the doctors so what kind of thing is this one you, 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 you have just have, this nothing is nothing wrong with this woman so there was an argument sir, sir, something was wrong this is what we saw no there was nothing wrong now it's a fight <laughs> the man said the man said excuse me sir excuse me sir please don't fight don't fight you are right he too is right so what you did not know I call my father in the Lord and he prayed that is what changed what you said in the morning you call your father in the Lord who is your father in the Lord she mentioned my name he said okay it's that one don't worry well, keep going to that church keep going to that church don't, don't stop that is what we call the supernatural forces beyond scientific understanding supernatural the forces beyond the laws of nature it's not physical it's not material it's beyond the visible beyond the visible this lady was always getting the job and losing the job getting the job and losing the job one day she came to a service where somebody preached about prophetic actions then she decided to carry it out she got up at midnight like they were instructed she went to her kitchen and got a knife funny lady and she started praying 
All these people that are making me to lose my job. All these powers that are stopping me. I cut off your hands. I cut off your hands. I cut off your hands. I was using it like this. She prayed like that and slept. Next morning. They called her. We don't know what happened to your auntie. Somebody has used knife to bush her, her hands. The night. That that's supernatural. I'm praying for somebody here. All the powers you need to rubbish any power that wants to rubbish you to rubbish any power that wants to rubbish your star receive the power in the name of Jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it in the name of Jesus a town for the man supernatural you mean departing from what is usual or normal a superhuman thing for somebody to move inside water you want to travel inside water you must behave like a fish because man is not a water being you behave like a fish you want to fly man is not a being that flies <laughs> so to fly you have to behave like a bird so to move in the supernatural you must become supernatural that's what the bible says all those people who are getting born again they have been born from above supernatural it's an unnatural intervention in the affairs of men it's a phenom phenomenon that happens when men have no explanation men have no explanation for it and reading through scripture you begin to find Evidence of super, the supernatural. All of a sudden, a king was having a party, and a hand came down and began to write in Daniel chapter 5. That is supernatural. A man vanishes from somewhere and he appears in the village 12 miles away in Acts of Apostles this is supernatural the earth opened suddenly and swallowed Korah, Dathan and Abraham a rebellious family this is supernatural the head of an axe fell into the river and somebody used wood put wood there wood that is supposed to float went down the heavy axe except axe head came up this is supernatural supernatural two people were walking on the surface of a deep lake Peter went and Jesus, but Jesus went and Peter followed. This supernatural. A cloud of smoke and fire was moving on the ground to lead the children of Israel to the desert. They were not seeing it in a dream, they were looking at it like the fire and the cloud were just moving about like this. Food we 
mistrustly appear like manna. It is the supernatural. Moses stood down watching the bush burning. The bush was burning. But it was not consumed. This is supernatural. I was a king that was fighting the people of God. The Bible said loud noises came from nowhere and the king began to run away. This is supernatural. There was an animal in the Bible that spoke the language of men. This is supernatural. Many situations in the Bible you find people brought back to life. This is supernatural. Elijah went to heaven by the hairline of chariot and fire. This is supernatural. Let me stop here. So I'm just trying to establish you. <laughs> Christianity is a supernatural religion. And if you must be the true representative of your father, you must demonstrate the power of God. You must speak words that will challenge your enemies. You must make pronouncement that will waste covenants. You must move in such a way that people wonder whether you are a spirit or not. The, the thing is this. Once the power of God comes upon your life, you are the first beneficiary. When the power of God came upon Samson, this yoke broke. This yoke broke. I'm believing there will be somebody here this morning. Say, Father, I want power. The kind of power that will rubbish all opposition to my life. There will be somebody here like that this morning. Can you raise up your right hand like fire and like thunder? My Father! My life is available. Visit me by fire. In the name of Jesus. Then we pray. Something happened many years ago when I was a little boy. <laughs> In the city of Akure, one brother who used to do morning crime, morning crime preaching, is preparing for the kingdom of God is at hand. He goes out in the morning 5 a.m. to preach the gospel. A brother in our church. There was commotion in the city of Akure that day. As the brother was going on evangelism, he never knew that the occultists and the native doctors were having their conference. He passed by the front of their meeting place in the shrine. Jingling the bell that they should surrender their life to Jesus. They came out against him. They started incantations against him. He began to speak in tongues. And they found that the more he spoke in tongues, the weaker they were becoming, the more powerless what they were saying was getting. They now got upset. They dropped in condition and gave him serious beating. 
and dump him inside their shrine. Somebody who was coming to prayer meeting the man and saw the brother. Saw them beating him. He came to church to tell us. It's not like our Greek Christians that we have now. Uh, Greek, uh, Greek people. Everybody rushed out of the prayer meeting. We headed for the Ashram. I was there. On the way, they were contacting other Christians. And they were, they were joining the team. They were joining the team. And it became a great crowd. And they, they rushed towards where these people were meeting. They were singing that the hand that saves the believer is in heaven. There is no idol. No idol can save man. No idol. Serious to ever song. Some of you are afraid to sing it. Or what you bunny bagua bella ru consoli sha That was the song all of us were singing. I was chaos. We ran there and removed the brother from there. They tried to physically fight. We overpowered them. And somebody went and told the king. The king sent his chiefs there. And ordered all of us to come to the palace. So we went to the palace. The king said, What happened? They explained that he was cursing them. Uh, the brother said he was just going on his own, he didn't touch them. So, so after the king had listened to the two parties, he said, I'm warning the two of you. This, this, this town, Christians will pursue their own. You too, pursue your own. Don't disturb each other again. Now, now get out of my palace. That was the end of the show. But if we remain a Greek, um, some are afraid to go. Some are afraid to sing. We will be a disgrace and an embarrassment to heaven. Can you raise up your right hand again? That cannot be insulted. Overshadow my life now. In the name of Jesus. Your voice is not loud enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Now listen carefully. Part of the reason why you must have power. Because there are so many people that heaven have great plans for them. But contrary powers had made them to end up in the dustbin of life. There are many people that heaven have great plans for. They died as shadows because of powerlessness. Therefore, our generation is littered with unfulfilled dreams. Our land is full of men and women who will have been great but have become crippled or cut short because of powerlessness. This is why I'm challenging you now. That don't conform to this weak, 
world. You need to fight for your destiny. The decision to be like others is like a decision to be against who you are supposed to be in life. Every time you are deciding to just be like others, you are mocking your destiny. Until you dare to be different, you cannot go far in life. There are many things you cannot attempt until you dare to be different. Until you decide to go where others have not gone. You cannot go really far. The power that is limiting you has to go away. Until you decide to do what others have not done. You cannot do really much in life. The generality, general, this is general, is always the enemy of originality. Trying to be like the generality of people is sacrificing your originality in life. Yeah, this is very well. Until you, you decide to act differently and pray, pray differently, read your Bible differently, you won't be different from other people. When God faced the children of Israel, everybody acted the same generally. They all ran away, including. Saul, the king. But David decided to act differently. And he ended differently. I'm seeing somebody here this morning. The power of God will make you to end differently in the name of Jesus. The fact that something has not been done before does not mean that it can't be done. The angel said, Mary, you will have a child. <laughs> so how can this be? I don't know a man. Nobody before me has ever given birth to a child without a man. He said, the power. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. It is that power that will make it possible. It's for that power we want to cry out this morning. Because it is those who step out that will stand out. In every family, every community, it's those people who step out that will stand out. Those who are trying the unconventional things are the people who experience the supernatural. When we started here many years ago, 1994, and we had just this auditorium A in the middle of swamp. A bishop left his church, his cathedral. He came here. He said he wanted to see me. He an elderly bishop man. I said, Okay, sir. Do you know what this bishop came to tell me? Said Dr. Lukoya, with the kind of prayer you are praying here, it is too dangerous, too acidic. You will not see anybody in this church. That's what. That's why he left the church. Come and tell me. Today, three quarters of the members of his church they are here. Don't conform with what the enemy is telling you to conform with. It is time for you to begin to set the pace. It's time for you to become a role model spiritually. It's time for you to become a history maker. A world shaker. A front liner. A road pointer. Very soon. If you begin to dare to be different, you 
pray the way God wants you to pray. You know God has positioned you for the front, but something is sending you to the back. Then you decide to fight it. And Jesus now said something. He told the disciples, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So don't attempt to go and face this people <laughs> without power. A sister came many years back. A sister. The lipstick was dangerous. The chain on her neck touches the belly button. What she had was not a hair ring, it's a large ring. But she knows the Bible. So she came to me and said, Well, uh, my family is a family of idol worshippers. I want to go to our village to destroy those idols. To destroy the idols. It's okay, what do you want me to do? Let us pray for me before I go. Who is going with you? I said, one, one pastor in our church. So, is he a deliverance minister? Say no. Because the Bible says he has put all things under our feet. It's okay. I prayed. There are different categories of prayer. Can pray gentleman's prayer. Can pray ceremonial prayer. I say, God, let your mercy be upon your child. Bless him or her as he goes. That is prayer. It's another prayer to say, Father, let the fire of Elijah abide on this life. Different prayer. So, as she was stepping out, I said, Sister, I'm not qualified to go there. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't go. You do not have the power to contest with this. Say no. Bible says he has given me power. It's okay. So she went. They started a vigil in the compound. The next day they wanted to destroy idols. Inside the vigil, these forces came in. They killed everybody. Including the deliverance minister they took. Only one little girl escaped. Because they lack the power to contest with the forces that is holding them in bondage. Demons don't like to lose their candidate. Because we call them unclothed beings. They need, they need the body of man or even animal to express themselves. Once they chase them out, they are not happy. They keep looking for somebody else to enter because they cannot express themselves because God has rendered them bodiless. No, God rendered them bodiless. So they're always looking for somebody to inhabit what to do. That's why Jesus said, if an unclean spirit leaves a place, it doesn't go far. It will be go, it will be see whether I can see go back there. They hate losing their accommodation. Part of the reason that there is serious warfare against mountain of fire. A lot of pastors don't like mountain of fire. They, they think mountain of fire is stealing their members. Many of them hate me like to be perfectly threat. <laughs> but really, it really does not matter. Those are our fertilizers. The fertilizer. 
This is a serious matter. When you need power to confront something, you don't have it. The person will be put to shame. Many destinies have been destroyed like this. Whereas there was a lady here many years back. We are going to start praying now. Lady here. Beautiful lady. In their village, the idol controlling the village must always be given a wife. They consult the oracle. They pick the woman and dump the woman in the shrine of that idol. The woman never marries anybody. That's how she will spend the rest of her days. And any family that Oracle say, bring your daughter, and they refuse to bring their daughter, they will deal with them and banish them from the village. So in this village, the former wife of the idol had died. They consulted an oracle. And by the time the oracle would talk, the oracle picked that our sister in Lagos. Picked Sister Joy. The family members of Joy came from the village. They were looking sorrowful and sad. So, Joy, sorry. The oracle, the village, has determined that you are the next wife of the idol. They thought she was going to cry. I said, okay, why are you, what are you here for? So you need to follow us to our village. Wind up your affairs in Lagos. That's why you are going to be now. You are going to marry the idol. She said, no problem. She went to press it. Three days dry. After the three days dry, he told the parents, Let's go. I'm ready to be the wife of the idol. So they took her to the village. Our, our friends in Lagos were crying. Even including Christian friends. They were crying. And when she arrived at the village, and people saw how beautiful she is. They shook their head in sorrow. So the day to hand her over to the idol came. It was a big ceremony. They danced with her throughout the town. Put white chalk all over her body. Put a big bead on her neck. And so the whole village, including the chief priest, they escorted her to the shrine. And when they got there, say, Oh, idol, we have brought your wife. We're going to drop her with you now. She's going to be living with you. Feeding on the sacrifices they bring to your shrine. Let the sacrifices prosper in our life. Let rain fall here at the due time. Let there be prosperity. And they push the girl into the shrine. And the, and the village, the village went back. Everybody went back. Our parents fearfully left. And the little sister got inside. She went straight to this image that they call idol. She call idol. And she said, by the power 
of the God of Elijah. I set you ablaze. Fire fell on this idol. It fell down and broke to pieces. So she ran after the villagers. She said, come back, come back, come back. Come back. I think my new husband is in trouble. Come back. Come back. So the sheep priest ran back. They ran back. They saw the idols scattered on the floor. They looked at Sister Joy. So, what happened? So, 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 it's been destroyed. So who do I marry now? The native, the chief priest look at her. Look at the idol on the floor. And fled. Sister Joy ran after them. They said, no, no. Don't, don't run after us. You, you, are, you are the new idol. <laughs> I didn't know I don't know. Don't run around. That was how Mr. Joe was released. And joined us back in Lagos. If she was a Greek, she cannot demonstrate the power of God. That incident technically finishes her destiny. Rise to your feet now. All eyes closed. But you see if you are here, you are not born again. Not just surrender your life to Jesus. Just raise up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. To say that short prayer with me, immediately we close. Don't go home. Just join us at the altar here. God bless you as you do so. Take your 17 days booklet now and rise on your feet. What is our confession for this week? What is session? Let's go. I can't hear you. Okay, which session are we in now? Connecting to the God of. Okay, now what is the memory verse? Can we read it together? There is none like a. Go on. Yes. Make sure you learn it is part of the covenant of this uh, program. We sing from pictures. Amen. All eyes closed. This is the 70 days prayer meeting. This is a place where we take no for an answer. It's a place to put in practice that which is written. I'm the violent ticket it by force. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? <laughs> to destroy the yoke of standstill. <laughs> Sisters, can I hear you shouting this? Your voice is not loud enough. Fall upon me now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Open that mouth, open that mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Powers! 
using my date of birth to send arrows to me can I hear the brothers shouting this loud sisters can I hear you roaring like thunder aggressive the better because some angels are in the midst just for this prayer point breakthroughs that will make my mockers bow manifest in my life in the name of Jesus Saints, saints, don't be afraid. Saints, saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Silence. Don't say anything. Don't even say amen. That if you say amen. Father, I stand here as your servant. And I decree that anything hiding in the body of anyone which has become enemies of their new song. Let these angels that are moving about in the midst start surgery and begin to take them out. The enemy of your new song. The angels are taking them out. That sister in the gallery, the wicked arrow, fired over seven nights into your body to destroy you. It's coming out one by one. That's the first one. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. That's number five. That's number six. That's number seven. As we pray this next prayer, which is to deal with demonic arrogance, if you are in this meeting, you know very well your own mother, your mother, worship the waters, find a way to this altar, and be on your knees and cry to the Lord in this prayer. 
Can you shout this loud and clear? Demonic arrogance assigned to mock me. Your voice is not aggressive enough. Say it with fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, that is the power of God coming upon you. That is the power of God coming upon you. That is the power of God coming upon you. Jesus name we pray very good now with anger boiling your soul shout this loud and clear powers working hard to keep me small Sisters, can you shout it? Brothers, can I hear you roaring like thunder? Before I leave this place, dad, in the name of Jesus. Put your mouth up, put your mouth. You cannot afford to come here and go home the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence again. Please don't say anything. Don't even say amen. Father, I'm praying for this person who has been having these horrible nightmares. Sometimes you are afraid to sleep. Right there where you are, fire is coming upon you to destroy the witchcraft plantation in your body. To remove the horrible nightmares. Number one. Three. Four. Five, six, seven. Yes. Father, I'm praying for all those who are here and there are strange marks appearing on their bodies when they wake up right there where they are let a fire begin to go from the top of the head to the soul of the feet from the top of the head to the soul of the feet from the top of the head to the soul of the feet from the top of the head to the soul of the feet from the top of the head to the soul of the feet Thank you, Jesus. The next three prayers, they are not ordinary prayers. As you pray this first one, if there is a sickness in your body, and you know the sickness is in your family, 
find a way to this altar now and be on your knees everybody will shout this loud In the name of Jesus. advancement you can include your husband you can include your children First, blocking my advancement your time is up Your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. We are not here to joke. We are here for serious business. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A seven for the man. Please bring out your tithes and your offering for this meeting. Father, we thank you for the tithes and the offering. Good measure, present, falling over. Let it be the lot of your children. Fill your children with power and strength. And lay your hands upon their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The boxes are before you there. Drop your offerings and tithes in it. Also, you can take our number from the screen. God bless us to do so in Jesus' name. We continue to do this. 
where we listen to the ministration. Stop it, please. As you close your eyes and begin to prophesy upon your own life. Speak good things into your own life. Decree that it shall be well with you. Decree that no weapon formed against your life shall prosper. Decree that you will trample upon every serpent and scorpion and every power of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus. Makita li kayaboshente. Amen. The Lord blesses us from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You shall go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. This week you shall prosper. You shall be an overcomer. You shall be a victor, not a victim. The glory of God will overshadow your life. In the name of Jesus, all the prayers we have prayed here today shall become mighty testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, all the prayer requests are answered them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Sisters, you don't forget the attaching minutes prayer meeting after the service next Sunday. Come with the photograph of all the members of your family, your husband, your children, all the members of your family, or your siblings if you like. Come with pictures. Let us share the grace and fellowship.